Well, welcome everyone to this DLTV webinar. It's the 18th of May, 2022. And we're really excited to have uh, Paul Hamilton to share his insights on AR, augmented reality in education. Now I'll let Paul introduce himself in just a moment, but I know that I was really excited to hear about Paul's goal in this session this afternoon, because I'm sure most teachers in Australia, we've been exposed to AR, we've seen what it looks like, uh, but we, we wonder how you get past that sort of gimmick stage of it and how you start to use it to really create stuff. And that's what Paul's all about. So uh, really looking forward to this afternoon. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Paul. Thanks, Paul. No worries. And let me just, uh, I'm going to share my screen, hopefully. Nathan, smooth transition, which we um, hopefully uh, love, which is good. Looks like it's coming. Yep. It looks like it's up. Awesome. Uh, really good. So uh, my name is Paul Hamilton. Thank you, Nathan and uh, Kevin, for um, allowing me to speak to everyone today. Um, so I'm going to come at this from a from an educator's point of view. I hope those people that um, don't know me know that I am an educator. So just a, the teacher in me is saying, know me before you teach me. Um, so I've been a little bit obsessed with AR probably for the last five or six years and, and probably dedicated most of my kind of training um, in that regard now. And I'm really lucky that I get to work with uh, primary schools, secondary schools and higher ed and also kind of private companies as well in the AR space and education space, which um, I'm, I'm really excited to be doing that. So originally I'm a Melbourne boy. So I've done some teaching at uh, Geelong Grammar at Altham College down that way as well. Um, I'm now living and residing on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, although it's incredibly wet at the moment. Um, and I'm really, really lucky that I get to spend most of my time now training in AR and getting out to primary schools and secondary schools. So I'm super excited to be talking to you about it today, which is great. Uh, also really passionate um, about literacy, not just digital literacy, but um, I was lucky enough to author a children's picture book too, which is just something I'm really proud of. If, if, you've, ever, <laughs> if you've ever tried to publish something from, uh, from ideation through to publication, it's not the easiest process. So really proud of that as well. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, AR. Uh, we're not just gonna talk about it, by the way. I'm gonna give some live demonstrations. I'm gonna to endeavor to do that today, Nathan. Um, I know that's always fraught with danger, doing live demos, but I'm gonna attempt that because I wanna really cut through the, um, I guess the mystery that it's a difficult thing to do. Um, so what we wanna to do today is actually explore what AR is and you're probably sitting there thinking, Paul, I already know what it is, but let me just kind of clarify it a little bit for you because I think we kind of know what a good website looks like. We know what a good app looks like, but I think we're starting to really evolve in the AR space. Um, I'm gonna come at this too um, from a very much a creation point of view. So I know that you can put a lion and a tiger in your bedroom. I know you can do that through Google search. I get that on your phone, but I'm gonna come at this from an educator's point of view because all of the work that I do is about students creating content and also teachers creating content too. So I'm hoping to give you them examples, uh, those examples as well. And I'm gonna jump into a, an app called Reality Compose and just show you how easy it is to build something that actually has purpose and meaning. Um, so we'll get to that as well. Hopefully that's good. Jump in the chat, please, because we'd love to see who's here. I can, we've already had a good input from Liz um, and Lila and some other people that are jumping in the chat. We'd love to know where you're from and what you teach specifically, because that's going to give me some insight already uh, going into it. Um, so where do you get started? Now, everything that I present today is going to be on a resource on a Padlet. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to put that in the chat right now hopefully right now. Let's see if I can actually, um, I'm going to do that right now for you. Um, let me go and copy link. And I'm going to put that straight in the chat right now so that you don't have to scan that on your phone. And that's not it. I will do it in a minute. Um, if you just kind of bear with me a little bit, I will do that. But that's where we're going to get started. There'll be absolutely a plethora of resources that I go through today. So if you think, Paul, you're going too fast, where's that resource that you just showed? What I would love you to do is to actually just think, Paul's given me that resource. Um, I'm just copying that link right now and I'm gonna put that in the chat so that you can actually access to it. 
So what does that have in it? Just so that you've got a, um, a fair idea um, of what's there. We've basically got, it should be going in right now. Um, and that's public. Um, so you can use as many of those resources as possible. It will have um, planning frameworks. It will have case studies looking at the effect of augmented reality on the brain. It'll have 3D models that you can use. It'll have lots of infographics and free resources. They're all free. I just ask, um, I just ask that you don't change the branding on it and put your branding on it from a, especially if you're an organization, I just ask that you keep the branding on it. That would be great. So that's in the chat now, guys, if you want to have a look at that Padlet, um, there's some terrific getting started tutorials. So hopefully I've I kind of ignite a little bit of a flame today and that you can actually take that a little bit further. So I'm going to check for understanding. Nathan, Kevin, I'd be interested in you as well. Um, just quickly tell me before we articulate and get a clear understanding of what it is, let me know what you think it is. I think one of the dangers of jumping on emerging technologies and new tech is when we don't have a clear idea of what it is and what it does, then we start to use it in not authentic ways. We don't use it in ways that are actually connected to how the technology is supposed to be used. So I'd be really, really interested if you're in the chat at the moment and you're not sure, I've got other things on, I'd love to know in a sentence or two what you actually think AR is. So Nathan's just talked about inserting virtual content into the real world um, through the use of a screen, which is really, really good element to it. So we're talking about that. I'd love to know if you, what's the distinguishing difference between AR and VR, which often gets bundled together um, as an emerging technology, uh, a mixed uh, reality. Um, I'd love to know what you think the difference between the two are. So thank you for those people that are jumping in the chat and kind of letting us know. If you've got no idea, let's have a look at it. It's basically that layering of digital content, right? So we're gonna layer it in the physical world. But here's the difference. What we're seeing, what we're seeing at the moment is often AR is simply being used for the sake of using AR. We're actually seeing a lot of use cases in schools where we would be better to use VR than we would augmented reality. And so what's a really great way or the distinguishing factor between the two is looking at how it connects to the physical world, how it connects to the place in which you place it. And so when we look at AR and some of the examples, and I'll do some demos today, where students are creating content, I'll try and give an authentic purpose for when to use AR and when you might not use it, okay, going forward. So I created this a little while ago and it got a little bit of traction on Twitter. And it really looks at the five phases of creating using augmented reality. So I'm not talking about just viewing here, I'm talking about the different stages and some of the different applications that are used in the different phases of AR. So once again, if I wanted to scan um, an existing uh, piece of furniture or the world around us or something, we've, we've got, we know with iPads, for example, and LiDAR and some of these technologies, we can scan things and actually capture them from the real world. We can also measure um, our classroom by using something like the measure app, which is augmented reality. And we're actually applying a ruler or some sort of measuring device there as well. But as we go through, and this is where my passion is, we can start to see that there are some phases where we can get students as young as four and five years old to create their own augmented reality for digital storytelling and some other areas as well. And then what I'll do a demonstration today is, is, um, as well is I'll show you some examples of actually composing an AR scene and what that might involve and how that might be different from virtual reality going forward. The connecting to the physical space is obviously really important. And then how do we deploy it? A student that creates a 3D version of a piece of furniture for design tech and places it somewhere, how do they then communicate that with their teacher? How do they actually send that forward, uh, I think, which is really, really exciting. Um, I kind of work in the Apple sphere, so I work a lot with iPads because they're the perfect device, and this is not just me preaching, but they're a really good device for AR, because not only can I view it, because it has a rear camera to view augmented reality, but it also has creation apps. So 
Um, there's a couple of free apps there that I've got in the Padlet, so don't feel like you've got to record them. And I've got some really good tutorials about how to use them as well. Reality Compose is also available for Mac as well. Um, and it's part of the development program or the development package of part of Xcode and Swift as well. Um, Reality Composer I use from grade threes right up through higher ed and university space. And I normally use AR Maker in the, in the early years because it's also a creation app as well. Um, so once again, AR is a little bit different from VR in which I can actually create um, on a certain device, but I also need to view it. And we need that rear camera to be able to, um, that tablet to be able to view AR going forward. So this is um, a little example I did with a school when we were looking at Anzac Day. And I think it's a really great example of connecting to the physical world. So we were exploring, um, we were exploring how we can actually hold on to stories, how we can recognize and actually use augmented reality to visualize um, the past and into the present. And we just changed some 3D models, the opacity of them, of some soldiers, and we kind of placed them um, at a shrine around our area here on the Sunshine Coast to give that impression of connecting the digital to the physical. And I think this is a really, really good example of how that might look different in VR and how the purpose and the probably the outcomes are a little bit different going forward as well. So when I before I jump and do some demos and have a look at some of the examples that, that we work with in schools, um, Augmented reality is different and, and virtual reality is an incredibly immersive technology. Um, anyone that's been in it knows how immersive it is. But in its very nature, by actually putting on the headset and we're starting to blur the lines a little bit. I know a lot of VR sets actually now have that ability to actually see the environment in which they're placed. But traditionally, VR has been that disconnecting from the place in which I'm viewing the digital content. Okay, where AR's sole purpose or it should be its sole purpose, is to connect the digital to the physical world in which it's placed. And hopefully I can give some examples of how that is actually effective going forward. So if you, for example, if I jump on the App Store or um, Android Store now or, or Google Play, you'll actually see a lot of um, AR apps, right? You'll, you'll see them just not in education. You'll actually see them in industry. And I want to have a look at some of the AR in industry as well because I think that's a really great way of connecting what AR is actually about. By seeing its use, there's Pokemon Go there as we go through, the thing that probably um, truly introduced uh, uh, a big scale of people to AR. Um, but you'll see that there's a lot of different industries. You'll see that there's medical, there's education. Uh, you'll see that there's science and there's certainly retail and commerce as well. So if you're in high school and you're looking at doing um, anything to do with those kind of subcategories, think about how AR might fit. So I was at um, uh, Mountain Creek High School, big high school near us the other day, and we were looking at game design, but we were specifically looking at augmented reality games and how we can actually, um, I guess, engage the player or the user or the viewer in AR games and how that could be different or similar to normal game design kind of process going forward. So let's have a look outside. Um, let's have a little look. Now, I'd be really curious in the chat. I can see Dean's in there. Um, I can see Joanne's in there. Thank you for contributing, guys. Really, um, really appreciate that. Let us know if you've got any apps that you actually currently use that are not in education, but you actually use them as part of your, your, your normal life on your phones. Tell me what kind of AR do you actually use? And as I'm showing you some demos, I'm hoping that we can see a connection between um, business and enterprise, but also education and where that's going as well. iJack Demi, awesome. So iJack is an amazing visual arts and we've used that a lot, Demi, and it's probably one of the more powerful ways of layering uh, creativity over traditional artwork. So thank you, Demi, really appreciate you telling me that. That's great. Hopefully I can give you some other ideas today as well. So. Uh, the other day I was on the Ikea app, okay? The Ikea app is great if you haven't been on it. Oh, Elizabeth, Adobe Aero, fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so I was on the Ikea app the other day. I was looking for like a sound system, a table Wi-Fi speaker. And I jumped onto the Ikea app and I, this is in my house where I'm actually going to place it. And I was able to visualize what it would look like to scale. 
And it's got a very, very direct purpose, hasn't it? It allows me to visualize it. I can see on scale if it's going to be big enough for that space. I can actually compare it with another lamp and have a look at what color is going to complement my paint and the, the desk that it's on. And you can spec save as too, Liz. Yeah, I love that. Um, so Ikea is a really good example that we can actually learn a lot from because it's simple. It's not an over polluted site. It's not placing a whole gallery in augmented reality that doesn't fit in the space. It's about connecting something that I'd like to buy where, with where it's being placed. Now, what's interesting is Shopify did a study and they're saying that 94%, there's a higher conversion rate of buying products if they have an AR element to it, which I think is a really interesting one. And that's why you're seeing a lot more AR retail commerce. But if we look at education, think about that. What products are our students creating that we can connect to their own homes or around the school environment in which we're actually going? So this got me, and this is one of the big things that I work with schools. We want to use the right tool for the right job. So when teachers come to me and they say, Paul, I want to create an augmented reality scene with 100 pieces of the kids' artworks with sound, music, and I want to create an AR scene. Well, it's not the right purpose, all right? So the right purpose for that, or the correct one, I believe would be virtual reality. We can load a lot up, it's, it's possibly web-based, and um, we can add the interactions, we can add a lot of content, a lot of their artworks, and we can create some pretty cool interactions. However, if we look at augmented reality, you could take the individual artworks and actually have a buying option or a viewing option where each piece can be actually viewed in the person's house. So imagine me as a parent or a grandparent getting my students' work, um, the artwork that I used to put on the fridge, right? But now I can actually view it and actually maybe buy it and maybe get a frame that actually will view it in my own house. So I'm hoping, and by the way, that graphic is on the Padlet. So if you're looking to say, Paul, that's a good kind of reference between the two. If you're looking for that, it's on the Padlet as well. So think about that. Think about AR as being simplistic and clear in nature, but it has a direct purpose of connecting with the environment. So I can see if my son or daughter's artwork is going to go on that colored wall paint over, over the bed that I'm actually going to place it. So I can visually see that. And I can't necessarily do that in VR because I'm actually not layering it on the real world. So I think that's a really good way of looking. Thanks, Elizabeth. So this is the example I often get because I still get a lot of teachers saying, Paul, I love AR. I want to do a whole art gallery and I want to put it. Well, the problem with that is AR is to scale. And so what that means is if you're going to create an art gallery, you're going to need a whole oval or a playground to view it if you're building it to scale and size, especially if you want them to walk around through the walls, uh, around the walls and so forth. So I thought that was a great example to show going forward. We know it's big in art. Absolutely. Demi mentioned iJack. We know that it's big because a lot of freelance artists and upcoming artists and existing artists, you want to try before you buy. So you want to actually see how the artwork looks in your house, which I think is a really great way of using AR. We're seeing a lot in tourism. So if you're in high school and you're doing marketing in tourism and business, Think about how we can create little kind of tourism info boards like this one that are digital and that don't distract or detract from the environment in which they're placed. So that's my beautiful beach, Mooloolaba Beach. And I created a kind of a little AR scene there to show what we can do in that kind of tourism space um, where people can scan a QR code, they can view it, they can find out more about the place but it's also not going to diminish the beautiful beach that it's actually got. And I can put my phone down at any stage and actually look at that beautiful beach as well. So we're seeing really kind of good efforts there. In education, there's a really good connection there with visual posters and those posters that you might do in primary school, taking it up a little notch and thinking about how we can actually engage with the people looking at those information boards or posters going forward as well. And then we're seeing huge, obviously, in training. And most of my work with higher education is looking at AR for actually training purposes, whether it's in engineering, whether it's in medical science, 
whether it's being able to place like in this example, which is from an app called Jigspace, um, where you can actually learn in your own house about the mechanics and where things are placed. Because AR is spatial. So AR allows me to move, to, in, to actually kind of be curious and move and explore around the area as well. So you can see there in Jigspace, um, that's a kind of built-in students there as well. Awesome, that's great, Elizabeth, love that. So um, we can see an industry, whether it's through information signs, whole range of different areas, we can see that it's starting to get really and grow a lot of legs and be quite mainstream um, with different industries. So if we peel that back now, if we peel that back and say, okay, that's all good and well, Paul, but what about education? So these are some of the areas that we're seeing AR really come to, um, come to fruition. And we're starting to see how we can actually look at some of these ways in, I guess, more authentic ways than you might. I think Nathan mentioned um, kind of beyond that gimmicky stage, what does AR give that maybe another way of presenting information or creating content not give? And so if we look at mathematics for a really good example, there's a, there's a, a wonderful application called GeoGebra AR, and it allows kids to create through mathematics different um, physical shapes and then layer them in the real world. So if I was, for example, creating a faucet for the bathroom, the kids could actually design and they could use all of their mathematics and, and all the different formulas that were involved and it would create the shape and then they could layer it to see if it actually fit and would do the job that it wanted. So any kind of 3D spatial concepts in mathematics, that's going to excel because AR in its nature is spatial, all right? And then we look at right down to year four and five-year-olds. There's a couple of primary school teachers here. I think it was either Deanne or Joanne primary school. Um, th there's some amazing ways of connecting to the world, whether it's I'm going on a bear hunt and the kids are doing pictures and we want to put the bears in the, the playground. We can see how stories and narratives can be actually transferred into the real world, which I think is really a great way of kind of jumping into augmented reality um, in the early years, which I think is super exciting. So the measure app is one. I think on most phones, whether you've got um, an Apple device or whether you've got maybe an Android, there's probably a measure AR app on it, um, which I think is really, really beneficial. And if you look at that measure app, it's a different kind of AR. It's in the capture stage. So I can actually capture and learn more about the outside world. Now, I know that in a lot of industries and in the hard hat industri industries, the builders and engineers are actually using their phones and iPads and other devices a little bit more than they used to because we've got these quite accurate tools at our disposal. And we can start measuring from an education point of view, we could actually use that free app in regard to measuring and finding out more about the world in regard to different sizes. And we could take it that step further and then say, right, I've now found out how big my student desk is. If I wanted to create and design, um, I don't know, a pencil holder, I could actually create it with one of those apps in the create stage, which could be a, a sculpting app. It could be Tinkercad, could be Morphe. It could be one of those. And then I can actually compose and put it together and actually connect it with my actual student desk to see if it fits. So here, if we look at the five phases of AR, we're capturing data about the real world using AR, but then we're creating using 3D modeling and we're composing and connecting to the real world. And I don't think anywhere here, I'm talking about putting those lions and tigers like in your bedroom, like you see a lot of AR. Um, we're actually talking, I think, about the creation process in education. You can hopefully start to see some really authentic ways that we might be able to use AR going forward, which is kind of what I do uh, going forward in schools. The other way to look at it is the, the stages of learning. So I had a kind of a tough gig the other day. I was at like a, a TAFE convention in higher ed, and we were talking about using AR. And sometimes it's difficult to kind of get in with the higher education space. But we, I kind of broke it down into the stages of student learning. So when would we use the AR? Do, do we use it just to engage the student and not use it again? And that's fine. Do we actually use it to actually explore parts of the body? So if we had a 3D model in AR where I can actually explore the different systems, 
I would use it in that explore phase. And then we kind of talked about that some higher eds are actually using AR for the students to actually create content in AR and to share it. So Elizabeth, when you're talking about um, your students kind of using AR information boards, or we're looking at Demi IJAC, that would be very much in the, the kind of explaining and elaborating on their ideas, but they're also, you might actually assess that piece of work, or you might assess that AR scene at the end of the unit itself. So sometimes I like to look at where AR actually fits authentically and not where I'm trying to jam it into something that doesn't fit. And once again, you can get all of these infographics on that Padlet. And so make sure that in the Padlet, you can download any of those. Please just don't change the, um, the branding because it's obviously owned by the company that I work for, if that's okay. But you can use these, you can print them off. You can use any of these going forward that you might like to use. I've done a fair bit of talking for that first half an hour. I'm going to give some demos in a minute, um, which I think is going to be super cool for you to see kind of creation in process in an authentic way. But if you've got any questions, can you just put them in the chat? Is there anything, is there anything that we've just done there that you've got questions about? Or is there anything that you, you're thinking, Paul, can it be done? Is this the sort of thing you're talking about? Um, I love the people in the chat at the moment that are actually... Um, exploring and telling me about their ideas. I think that's really, really brilliant. But if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the chat because I'd love to engage with you in that chat as well. Paul, well, just as people are um, uh, putting things, I, I've been reflecting recently on how in the classroom there used to be, you know, we used to talk, especially when iPads first came along, you know, a decade ago. Yep. And it was all about all these apps you could use in your classroom and and, and it was all a little bit like none of them had really found their niche yet. You know, like yep. it was all just kind of like, oh, maybe we can use this or this is really cool. Yep. Yep. And it, it feels like AR is one of those things where we're starting to see a niche where it really, or several niches where, yep. where it actually is effective and, and not, not just, you know, not just fun, but really useful as well. I, I know yep. I've used that measuring one in my backyard to figure out where to put stuff and yeah. Yep. And, and, and you're absolutely right. So all the work that I do, Nathan, is only actually using two apps. I use the AR Maker in the junior space and I use uh, Reality Composer from 3Up because those two apps are both free. They have low entry points, but they have high ceilings. Hmm. So you can create anything from a commercial product with Reality Composer, which I've seen, um, I've seen companies use the exact same software that I'm using with year threes. So hmm. that's, that's pretty mind blowing in regard to hit and miss apps, Nathan, because I'm not a big believer there as well with, with hit and miss. I'd rather use an app that I develop skills in, that mm. I can save, that I can build on, that I can get feedback on, and then I can deploy at the end. So mm. I always think they're the apps we're looking for, right? Mm, absolutely. Joanne, great question. So if you look at the graphics, if you look at the Padlet, I've got a lot of programs that you can use. Um, I'm not really focused on VR for this. I really want to separate the two because I think they are different. Um, but there are some really common ones like, um, like Cospaces, for example. So Cospaces you can create in VR, but if they're using a tablet that has AR capabilities, you can view the content in AR, if that makes sense. Where I would question that is I think we create for a different purpose. So I'd actually say that if you're creating a really big scene in in virtual reality, yes, it's okay to view it in AR, but I do think that they have a different purpose in what they actually connect to Joanne. So um, Cospace is there. One of the first graphics that I showed that I'll go back there. If you look at the Padlet that I've actually got there on that one, Joanne, I'll have all the names of the different applications that I use. I know some people have used Adobe Aero. There, you'll notice that the Reality Composer one there is the one I'm gonna to demo today. It's also free. And for my little learners, my little creators, um, you can't go past something like AR Maker, which I'll, I'll give you a quick demo in that as well as we go through, which I think is exciting. Uh, great question, Joanne. You're right, Christopher. Oh, um, Nathan, can I ask you to do a favor for me? Can you just copy in the chat that Padlet and put it in the, in the chat for Christopher for me? Just kind of cut and paste it. That would be awesome. Okay, no worries. Thanks, Christopher, for reaching out. That's awesome. 
Um, Christopher, you'll find some great tutorials and lots of infographics, everything. There's probably too much there um, as well. All right, so let's, let's, let's soldier on here because I've got to give this demo. I'm looking forward to showing you how it might look in an authentic kind of way. Um, Reality Composer is not a Windows. That's probably the only thing, Liz, um, at the moment uh, in regard to that as well. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to skip that. But this was just another, um, when I first wrote that picture book that I told you about, I wanted to create an AR scene as well, where we could put a little window, think of it like a Narnia, think about it going down the rabbit hole with Alice in Wonderland. These kind of portals, and this is probably more an example of VR than an AR, but these portals have been part of narratives for a long time. So if you think about AR as a way of putting a portal up and then going into it and being engaged in another narrative, it's another way that we're seeing a lot of kind of um, schools integrating with AR going forward. Now, I just want to show you a quick demo. This is the P to 3 AR Maker app that I use a lot with my juniors. And the reason why I love it is it like I said to Nathan, it has a low entry, it's easy to use, but it's got a high ceiling. So these are some indigenous astronomies that we're actually working on. The kids actually do, um, did drawings on their iPads and then they brought them into their library as a way of representing what that kind of indigenous astronomy looked like. So when we're thinking about keeping cultural significant stories alive, Anything that you're drawing or doing traditional artwork with, you could use. Now, if you didn't want to use that and you wanted to use Adobe Aero, the ideas and the concepts are the same, right? It's just that we're using different tools going forward as well. Um, so we can definitely do some really cool things going forward. The AR Makers, as I mentioned before, I won't spend too long on this little demo here, but you can see that it's aimed at early childhood but there's some really nice scope for using it in the upper primary as well. It's got a lot of pre-made content, but you can actually go in and actually layer your own content in there as well. So if kids have taken photos, they can view them in AR and they can do some pretty cool stuff going forward as well. All of these things are actually in the Padlet. So if you want to have a go at this, um, I've got some steps there. You can print off, you can put it in your classroom, um, and you can kind of get started with those. So I won't dwell on that too much, but lots of resources in the Padlet as well. And then the other big thing, obviously, is actually putting it in the place in which it's going to be placed. So if my little preps and grade ones are doing three little pigs and reimagining that story and talking about how they can do that, that ability to bring Oh, that's just outside my house um, with my cat Mogsy, being able to bring it into your backyard and actually layer that, that beautiful kind of story and bring it to life in a different um, uh, medium, I guess, is a really kind of nice way of kind of bringing that in there as the kids are, are constructing narratives going forward. And once again, all of those are on the Padlet um, that Nathan, I think, has just redone. Thanks, Nathan. I appreciate that. And then you can take that a little bit further. So I'm using the same kind of P to 3 app. This time I'm using it with older kids and we're doing fairy tales, Inti Winty Spider, uh, also looking at um, doing kind of their own drawings and their own artwork and kind of bringing that in as well. That's the Hungry Caterpillar meets Inti Winty Spider, which is cool. And the other great thing about AR is it's about layers. So Adobe Aero does this very well. This is not Adobe Aero, this is just AR Maker. But you can see that when kids are using maybe Adobe products like Photoshop, by saving each individual layer and putting it in front of the other one, it all of a sudden becomes not a 2D artwork, but a spatial artwork that we can walk through, we can explore from different perspectives. And it's also one heck of a great prompt for creative writing in the primary school as well. Because we know that when kids create narratives visually through artwork, you've got a better chance of engaging those reluctant writers as well, which I think is really, really great going forward um, and, and go, go for that kind of walking forward. And there's just some book week activities for primary school that we've been working on, um, recreating from Lance Bolchen's Mechanica to Narnia, um, jumping into a lot of schools and actually kind of reimagining what those narratives look like but in actual school settings. So I love that we're starting to use schools and playgrounds um, to actually bring about those and, and, and bring them to life a little bit, which is great. And finally, we can go across different subjects. 
So this was just me playing probably a couple of years ago now, looking at some different context. Because it's spatial, we're actually seeing a lot of PE teachers look at using AR to actually look at strategy and gameplay in physical education. This is not a great example visually, but you kind of get the sense of where we can put things um, around a basketball court. We're seeing some beautiful kind of digital storytelling and literacy by looking at layers. And once again, this is all with a free app that's aimed at P to three kids, but you can see you can start to produce some pretty cool concepts by that layering kind of technique as well. Um, any visual con uh, concepts, so using it for social studies or pastoral care, using it as a prompt for kids in detention, um, a range of different political as a, as a stimulus and a prompt um, is really effective and connecting to the world. We're seeing any kind of spatial or procedural um, in science concepts are really good. So looking at kind of things like water cycles. And once again, this is an app that's aimed at P to three kids. So you can imagine what we can do um, with applications like Reality Composer that I'm gonna show you in a minute going forward there as well. And so you can see some there, any concepts um, we've got recreations. This was a great little one where primary kids were actually drawing um, their own versions of the Eureka Stockade and bringing them into AR as well. And there's things like persuasive text, like how do you, um, how do you make um, an advertisement more engaging? Um, how do you take an advertisement that's there, pull apart its bits and make it come to life, um, which I think is a super way of looking at things as well. So I'm going to give a demo now. I, I thought I'm looking at the time and I've got about a 10 minute period here to give a good demo that you can see something in action that's authentic. Um, and hopefully that gives you a better of idea. If you don't have this hardware and software that I'm showing you today, I still would love you to have a really good concept of how AR could be used um, in that setting going forward. So that's once again, the QR code for the Padlet, but I'm going to get that down if I can. And Nathan, if you could just let me know when my iPad is showing, that would be awesome. Will do. Oh, I think we can see it now, actually, Paul. That's awesome. your iPad on the screen. Okay, let me put my pointer up. Now, if you don't have iPads and that, I still want you to hopefully understand the concept of what I'm trying to demo here going forward. So we're going to use an app here called Reality Composer. We love it because it's a blank canvas. So I'm going to open up a new project. And I'm going to choose an anchor. Now, this is what in augmented reality things are anchored to. So if I'm doing artwork, I might have a vertical anchor that's positioning a kid's artwork, a student's artwork on the wall. Or I can attach it to an image. Or I can do one of the really popular Snapchat face filters that I'm doing at the, that are really popular at the moment. But I'm going to choose one that's on the ground. Because I've been working with a school where they're looking at painting um, some of the furniture, outdoor kind of furniture that's in their school, and they want to see how it looks like before they start painting it. And they want it to be really creative. They've got this little spot that um, they're wanting to be creative. So I'm going to go with a horizontal because I'm going to bring in some of their artwork. So you can see here, it's a really simple, it's three-dimensional, which can um, kind of stress out um, people that have, haven't used a 3D environment before but it's super easy to kind of navigate. And if you notice on my screen here, I, I kind of elaborated to the fact that AR is spatial and it's to scale. See here, these are one meter by one meter. And I'm gonna use those specifically because I'm actually gonna use the actual size of the outdoor furniture because I wanna place it in the school playground to see what it looks at scale. So think about AR as being able to connect to the environment. If I was doing VR, it probably, the scale aspect of a single object might not be as important. Or it might be, but it might not be. It's super important with AR. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to my plus and I'm going to add some 3D objects. So Reality Composer has got a whole lot. One of my favorite um, websites called Sketchfab, you might have heard about it. Sketchfab's on the Padlet as well, and that's where you can download 3D files that are Creative Commons. But I've actually got a 3D file. You can see all of the different um, objects that I could bring in there. But I've been working on a outdoor furniture with these students, these year six students. And we've been um, designing furniture. So I've got an example here of what a painted, we were doing indigenous um, artwork. So you can see here, hopefully you can see that. 
and you can see that the 3D artwork that's on the top of it there. Now you can see this one's not to scale because we know that each of these is about a meter. And I know that my here, so I'm gonna move it around. It's super easy to use. Very much like a 3D modeling app, it's probably easier. And I'm gonna scale that up because I know that it's about a meter wide. So I'm gonna scale that up in regard to my furniture. And what I've done there is I've actually, we've done the actual design of what the students are thinking of painting the outdoor furniture. So before they jump on it and actually start looking at it, what we can actually do there is once we've got that in AR, we can actually press on the little AR button at the top and we can see how it looks. Sorry, this is my um, office, so it's actually not... Um, it's not actually outside, but you can see how it might compare with the grass, with the door. Um, sorry, it's my office and it's not the playground, but I can actually see and view it before I actually start painting it from scratch, which is super, super, um, I think, effective in what we were trying to do. And so what we were using there, we were using an app called Procreate, where we were drawing directly on the table itself with different brushes. Think of it a little bit like the Adobe and, and what you can kind of paint over the top. And then we brought it into AR to actually visualize what it's gonna look like there as well. Now this reality composer that I'm just showing you now, it also has, it's an industry, industry standard software. So it's free, but what I can also do is I can come up to the top and I can create behaviors. Now behaviors are interactive elements that are, you don't need any coding experience but knowing how coding kind of works kind of helps. So let's say that I wanted to, let's say it wasn't a, um, a piece of outdoor furniture. Let's say it was a hat or something that levitated. What I could do is I could go down here and I could go down and create a custom behavior that when I tap on it, it's going to either show or it could move left and right. I can apply some force and create an AR game like a, an Angry Birds game. I might be creating a solar system project that I could make it orbit around other shapes, which would be super cool. But I'm gonna select one. I might just select an emphasize and I might select a little, let's go with, not a pop, let's go with a little hover, a little Harry Potter, just so that you can see, have a little, let's go with a float and I'll make it float for about five seconds. So what I've got now is I can create behaviors, which could be something like um, my kids are doing some skateboard designs and I bring in a skateboard design and I can interact with it and go forward. So if I press play, I can go up and I can click on my furniture, which is a little bit abstract, I get that. And it gives me a little floating effect. Now I love this app because it's a blank canvas, right? We love apps where the kids are creating content. There's not a lot of just consuming tech. I would imagine that um, the DLTV, you guys are so passionate about kids getting new skills, applying skills and creating digital products. So that's kind of where my heart is as well. And that behavior then becomes a beautiful part of that um, AR scene. So if I place that there, I move it over a bit, I press play and I tap on it. I've got that beautiful hover in my um, little area here as well. So if we go back and we think back to some of the concepts that I've kind of talked to you about in regard to um, right from the beginning when we actually started going through some of those IKEA apps and we thought about the purpose of connecting digital products with the real world, that example that I just gave is an authentic one because my students are not gonna paint it until we actually do some planning, we design how it's gonna look, we preview it before we actually start painting that design on it. So I think that's got a really good connection between what I've shown you kind of in the first few slides and when to use it compared to when we might use virtual reality, which I always like to keep really separate and I like to talk about them individually and I don't like combining them like they have been because I think they have a very definite or different purpose for actually being used. So um, I know that with Reality Composer, I just gave a quick demo, the sky's the limit. We're actually working with app development co uh, developer companies with that same application 
to actually build industry digital products for customers as well. So it kind of gives that, that sense of what we're actually get doing there going forward. Um, if I can quickly go back to um, that initial one, or this slide here, we kind of, we used a 3D app to actually create the, or we scanned it, the outdoor furniture. We used Procreate to put our own design on it. We used Reality Composer to compose an AR scene with interactive elements. And then we used Reality Composer again to connect it to the physical space. So we connected that really, really physically for a sole purpose of seeing how that would fit. So if you've got high school students in that kind of design tech, definitely explore some of those ways of getting scale, getting your measurements, getting your designs and seeing how they look in the real world before they create them. And that's not just secondary kids, is it? That's primary kids where design should be a, an integral part of that, that kind of system going as well. So have a look at the Padlet. If I can just get that up really, really quickly, I'm gonna get it up before I come back to you guys and actually answer any questions that you have because I know I've done, I've kind of thrown a lot at you at the moment, but if I could just explain the Padlet, I've got lots of help tutorials there to get you started with any of those apps. Um, if you're really interested in kind of design and guidelines, I've got a, a category there, lots of Apple resources, lots of infographics um, for using some of those apps that I showed. If you're in higher ed, it's got some specifics there. This study section is really, really interesting. Um, a study's just come out talking about the cognitive load of when you're viewing AR or when your students are and how much, um, how much that takes up and how much it's actually going to influence. So I think that's a, a really interesting one. I'd love you to check out Sketchfab. Sketchfab is my favorite website where you can get 3D AR enabled objects. And I've just had, I've just had a, um, a humanities teacher up at Harvey Bay create this magnificent Colosseum that they downloaded off Sketchfab and the students can walk through the Colosseum at scale and see the size and explore it just by downloading it into Reality Composer and viewing it in AR, which is great. There are some fun projects there. Um, those projects are really good if you're into physics engines. So we're using collisions, applying gravity and force, and you can do that in that same application. A lot of planning documents, and even if you don't use Apple products, those AR planning templates might be really interesting because I think designing an AR experience is a little bit different than designing some other areas. So we've got some nice design, um, design frameworks. I've got some kind of scope and skills uh, checklists, some spreadsheets there that you might like to use when you're measuring your, your students' skills. And then lots of 3D models I've got there. If you wanna grab any of my 3D models, you can grab those as well. Um, Apple uses what we call a USDZ file. Um, but I'm hoping, I'm gonna stop sharing, come back to you. Um, I'm hoping that even if you don't use the same products that I do, I'm kind of hoping you've got a little bit of a clearer sense of what AR is and what authentic kind of authentic experience you can kind of engage your students with going forward. So Nathan, perfect timing. I've always tried to allow 10 minutes to answer any questions going forward. Um, HoloLens, yeah, I've got a question there from Elizabeth about um, HoloLens. I'm gonna leave that up to more of the VR experts with that because I haven't dabbled with it. I don't like talking about stuff that I haven't used. So I'd I'm rather- I'm not it. familiar with HoloLens either, Elizabeth, sorry. Maybe there might be someone here who's who is familiar with it. Yeah. Um, I I just having a look to see if there's any other questions. Joanne just, says. Just so you know, Elizabeth's joining us from Italy. Oh, brilliant! You, you may have missed that in the chat before. So. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, Joanne says, "What programs can we use to create?" Oh, so we've already sort yeah. of talked about some of the creation tools. Uh, Craig asks, "Anyone tried iOS apps on an emulator, an iOS emulator?" Um, so I'm guessing, Craig, you're hoping to be able to maybe do it on a Windows device and use yeah. the webcam or something. Yep. So um, the only ones that I've really experienced on Surface devices, Nathan and also Craig, I think who asked that question, um, it's just the 3D paint. I've kind of used that a fair bit in regard to you can view those on a 
a Windows AR capable device if it's got that those back cameras. Um, I've used them a little bit. Um, to be totally honest, I don't think they're built for AR and they're a lot glitchier. Uh, I've found in regard to the processing power, just I'm not saying that they're, they're not as powerful as an iPad. I'm saying I don't think they've been built f for that purpose in regard to the cameras. Um, I haven't used it on an emulator. I know if I could talk to you just quickly, Craig, one of the things that's emerging by the day is web AR. Hmm. Okay, so if you think about, I can open anything that I did today, I can open it in Safari in a web browser because it's kind of an Apple thing, right? But it won't be long before what you create with is you can flick out and you'll be able to view in web AR. That's, that's the next evolution is we've got these free creation devices, which are brilliant. I mean, industry standard that primary kids are using, awesome. But I think the next evolution is web AR where I can throw it to Nathan, regardless of what device he's on, and he'll be able to view that going forward as well. Mm. I think uh, that's certainly one of the things worth looking into. I, I noticed Joanne's asked the question whether, whether there, any of the programs or apps work on the Chromebook. And it's probably gonna be a similar thing. It'll probably be through web pages uh, rather than applications on the Chromebook. Yep. Um, there may be some Android ones that run on there. Can, can I? Can I address that too, Joanne? You'll actually find that a lot of web-based programs to do with 3D modeling now have a little button that actually says view it in AR or actually um, export as a AR friendly format, if that makes sense, like a file type. So I use a web-based application that you can use both on Chromebooks and Windows and Mac called Vectory. And Vectory is like a 3D modeling, a little bit like Blender without being as hard to use as probably Blender or Unity um, from a primary perspective, a primary teacher's perspective. Um, so things like Vectory or web-based, you'll be able to create with them. You just won't be able to view it on that Chromebook laptop because it doesn't have the rear viewer. So you'll be able to maybe get a link or a QR code that you can view on your phone, but you won't be necessarily able to view it on a Chromebook. So 3D content, definitely web-based stuff's going right you know, we know the way Adobe's gone and a lot of programs have gone web-based. So you can definitely create it for, it's just, I love a device that I can create and view on the same device because I'm kind of prototyping all the time, if that makes sense. I, I had a question, Paul, that I know a lot of schools and a lot of kids use Minecraft. Have yep. you had an experience with, with students using Minecraft or things they've made in Minecraft and bringing them into AR? Yeah, I've got a, I'll put it on the Padlet. I've got an awesome tutorial about how to get it from, um, how to get it from Minecraft into AR. Yeah, I'll, cool. um, I might post that on the Padlet uh, under resources, Nathan. Yeah. Um, it's brilliant because what they create, you can kind of walk straight through it. So um, that's where Adobe Aero is very good. Um, Adobe talks really nicely for some of those you basically put one of those blocks down the bottom and it allows you to export as a 3D file in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got, I think it's a GLTF or an FBX file, it's one of those, you'll be able to view that in AR as well. But I'll put that in the Padlet if you're interested. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Paul? Also, Nathan, is there anything that resonated as well? Like, was there anything that you thought that's a good idea or I can see the benefit of that? I'd be really interested as well. I loved your um, indigenous constellations uh, example, Paul. I mean, that's that's an area we're often talking about at the moment is that digital technologies teachers can struggle to find ways to yep. uh, to integrate um, First Nations perspectives and indigenous yep. perspectives. So yep. I just think that that was such a great looking example as well. I think I love now that there's so many different applications coming across all platforms that allow you to paint directly on 3D. And I think that's always been the, I needed something really expensive to be able to do that. But if you think about um, dot paintings and traditional Aboriginal art and telling stories through symbols, I think that allows for some really good scope because it's spatial, it's talking about journeys mm. and stories and narratives. So I think that's a really good connection. Mm. And being out of place it in country in a sense, you know, at least on the screen, it's yep. in a play. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Craig, I, I, I kind of feel your pain a little bit, Craig, at the moment. If if I come across any of those emulators and those experiences, I'll definitely um, 
I'll talk to you about it. I, you know, the VR, Apple does VR terribly, does AR pretty well, but I think Windows and Chromebooks does VR really well. I, I think from a creation point of view, I think there's a lot of great applications and software web-based that does the creation of VR really well. Um, you just need a device that's going to do that viewing as well as the creation part, which is sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I just, uh, I, Kev will probably want to speak in a moment, but if I could just uh, thank you, Paul, for giving up your time this afternoon and um, giving this presentation, uh, really lots of ideas, which is what we always love to see. And uh, yeah, just, just lots of, principles around how to make AR into something that, you know, that can be used effectively and authentically is, 